Hello, good morning and welcome to the AM Sports with me, Yuri Kuwampo. Well, there has been a big trending story from yesterday and it has to do with the intersection of education and sports. Now, it's about Martha Bisa, who formed part of a contingent of athletes from Ghana for the Summer Youth Olympics in 2014. Now, she has completed her degree at the Norfolk State University in the United States of America over the weekend. And she completed the four-year-long course with a Bachelor of Science majoring in management. During her time at the university, she was named Female Athlete of the Year for two consecutive years in 2018 and 2019. And we have a pleasure of, uh, you know, talking to her on Zoom this morning. And it's a pleasure to have you here, Martha. First of all, congratulations to you. But can you sum up the four-year experience? We know that you were extremely good uh, with your running throughout school. Four years, how has that been for you? Well, good morning, and thank you for congratulating me. Yeah, four-year journey wasn't easy. But about determination and focus, I was able to achieve that. Um, when talking about um, the achievement and the process and everything, it's, it's been a long journey. And trust me, when you, anybody listening or watching me know how it feels like when you combine athletics with a track, uh, uh, excuse me, um, classroom with athletics, it's very difficult because you need to adjust adjust to both sides because you cannot pass your classes uh, without not performing because mm -hmm. so you have to do both so it was a difficult task but as i said you need to determine and then you have to focus so that's what i did all these years and now this is the outcome of it certainly this is the outcome uh, but let's now look forward now you're done with school you are running whilst in school now uh, now that you've completed with your bachelor's uh, what's the next step for you? Are you still looking to continue your running? Yeah, I'm still continuing to run because I always say I, I, I am born to run. So I love running. So I'm definitely going to put like 95% of my time and my effort on a track mm -hmm. and then continue on my education too. So I'm still going to run. You mentioned continuing your education. Is it going for a PhD or you've not settled yet on what type of education we pursue in yet? Honestly, I have thought about it and because this is my first degree in um, business management and then I have a second degree coming up on the spring, which, is, which will be marketing. So after that, I, I was thinking of going to do my master's in um, cyber security, but that will not be my, uh, my top priority right now. But now the 95% of my time will focus on the track. That certainly is good news, but it leaves a lot of questions hanging, Martha. When you say you are going back to running, does that mean that you're coming back to Ghana to run for Ghana, or there's a possibility of you staying in the States and running there? I'm a Ghanaian, and I'll always be a Ghanaian. No matter where I am, I am a Ghanaian. So if I say I'm going to come back and run, I'm still running, I'm training. Whatever that comes on, I'll be there. Anything that happens, I'll be running for Ghana. But any decision that comes, I'll still be there. So it's 50-50. Anything can happen, positively. <laughs> yeah, anything can happen. And that's because of, uh, you know, there's a little issue that you have with the GAA. What's the, what's the latest with that? Has that been sorted out? Talking about the GAA, uh, it stayed the same, nothing has changed. Okay, I don't even think about the GA because they are the GA and Matabisa. So I have nothing to think about GA. It's, it's, it's the past. They always be my past. So, so, so what are your plans now, you know, with, with the whole, you know, you're separating yourself from the GAA. Is there a possibility that the two of you would come to a consensus and see you represent Ghana? Because that's what you truly stand for, according to what you are saying. I have never separated myself from the GA. They don't want me to be part of the association. The association is not for them, it's for Ghana. Because if anybody go out and run, they run under the flag of Ghana. And you see how proud the people are when they stand on the track to run under the flag of Ghana. So I don't think I have, there's no separation from me. They made it look like that, but 
I don't have any issue with the GA. They might have the issue with me, but which I don't really care much about that. All right. Thank you so much, Martha, uh, especially for staying up early. We know that it's really early there. It's probably done in the United States. And once again, a big congratulations and thank you for your time again. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for people that are watching me and people that will always be my fan. I thank Mr. Jolutro for all this hard work and him and Kokun Mako are put together. I appreciate your media for celebrating me. Thank you all. All right. So that was Martha Bisa. And during the 2014 Youth Summer Olympics, she won gold in the girls' 800 meters race. Now, Ghana's, that was Ghana's first Olympic gold medal at any international event. But let's do some more sports stories now. And the Black Star Satellites would be taking on Niger in the first of two semi final games in the Wafu Under 20 Cup of Nations tournament. The satellite started the competition on a good note, beating Nigeria by one goal to nil to qualify for the semi-finals, only to lose by the same goal margin to the Ivory Coast in their second game. Ahead of their clash, assistant coach Augustin Adote has been speaking on the approach likely to be deployed, the defeat to Ivory Coast and the return of Precious Boa. My colleague Muftar Nabula has more in the following report. The satellites had a performance against Côte d'Ivoire, many described as uninspiring. Despite opening their competition with a 1-0 victory over Nigeria, many Ghanaians believed the performance of the team against Côte d'Ivoire does not present any hope as the country seeks to qualify for the U20 World Cup. Assistant coach of the team, Augustine Adotte, previewing the semi-final fixture against Niger on Tuesday, called on Ghanaians to be patient with the team. Messages came to us, I mean the coaching staff, that we didn't play well against Nigeria, that we won 1-0. And coming to the Côte d'Ivoire game, now some of the spectators, even including management here with us, are applauding us. We played so well, but unfortunately, we, we, we lost. And you know, um, sometimes we need to psych ourselves. Nigeria want to qualify. Um, Côte d'Ivoire wanted to qualify as, as, as well. We had qualified already after beating Nigeria. We booked our ticket already. So it was left to us to decide the fate of Côte d'Ivoire and Nigeria. And unfortunately, Côte d'Ivoire made a great mark. By then, we have also uh, rested four or five players in readiness for the upcoming semi-final. Semi so Ghanaians sometimes will have to understand, not that we went in as a weaker side. We did our best, but unfortunately, we lost, we lo we lost at the end. The last time Abdel Karim Zito headed a youth national team to a tournament was in Niger in 2018. The then U17 head coach failed to qualify the team to the Under-17 African Youth Championship. Tomorrow's game presents an opportunity for Zito and his team to right the wrongs of 2018. Adote says the players must die for the country to prove the critics of the national team wrong. Proving our critics wrong and making us the coaches proud will mean the players will have to die on the field of play for nation, nation Ghana. The other time when we played against um, Nigeria, recess, the president entered. He came and shook the, 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 the dress room. He came and shook the dress room. Well, Ghana would be playing Niger in that tournament today. I'm bringing you updates on that across our sports shows live here on Joy News. But let's now do some European news where yesterday we did see the Champions League draw. And let's take a look at the fixtures. It was really a theme of reunions uh, with Rafinha and Neymar returning for PSG. This time, they will not be playing for Barcelona. Then we have Diego Costa with Atletico Madrid also returning to the Stamford Bridge for Liverpool. Naby Keita returns to Leipzig. And we see the remainder of the fixtures there. Certainly, PSG Barcelona would have to be the top liner there closely, followed by Atletico Madrid and then Chelsea. But there's also concern, and uh, that has to do with the Europa League. It's not always about the Champions League. You remember teams like Manchester United dropped down to the round of 32 fixtures. And these are some of the games to look out for. Lille versus Ajax, who dropped from the Champions League, certainly is one to keep an eye on. Wolfsburg then play Tottenham Hotspur. Manchester United will be facing Sociedad. And then Leicester City play against Slavia Praha. 
Well, those would be the European uh, matches to look out for. Remember, the Champions League action returns on February 16th. And uh, it's a, quite some time from now, uh, about two months from now. So certainly, it's too early to make any calls. But we're right here to be doing the build-up when the time comes close uh, by. Well, that's how we wrap up the sports here.